Good morning, everybody. Today is Wednesday, January 5th. Uh, this is Dr. Vong here, Best Life of Dad, with a quick COVID update. It's bad. Now listen, so much was made out of the million dollar day, million, million cases day yesterday. Let me tell you, don't worry about that one because that was a backlog from all the, the New Year's Eve and that sort of, that's why I didn't do a live um, a, uh, COVID talk yesterday because I knew it was going to be overblown. But today, today's number, which represents yesterday, Monday's number, 885,000 COVID cases in the United States. And that's the reported test. That's the ones where you actually go get tested. It's probably much higher than that do um, because of people who take home tests if you can find one but the numbers are horrible new york new jersey i don't i'm not gonna go through all the numbers but you get the idea chicago la is through the roof houston's even over 9,000 cases a day miami is fucking is on fire new orleans alabama atlanta i mean it's, it's just all it's all hot mess and it's worse than i thought faster than i thought and as i've been saying it's gonna omicron's gonna jump back up to the northwest it's already starting up in Washington State, Oregon. It'll hit Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, all the lower um, vaccinated states um, again. And then hopefully we'll be burned through. Now, some people want to say, Dr. V, you know, it's a milder uh, variant. Yes, but the cases are so overwhelming. Just remember this. Hospital cases, hospital, hospitalization has increased by 50%. 5 zero, 50%. That's a lot, y'all. For, a hospital, for hospital systems have already been stretched. I mean, they are really getting hammered, really getting burnt out. So just the fact that Omicron is milder does not give you free reign to do whatever you want. That's number one. Number two, and really the point of why I wanted to do this um, talk today, why is it milder? You know, all of these knuckleheads sitting here claiming that it's milder, so they therefore, therefore they can go to football games and concerts and New Year's Eve gatherings and stuff. Tell me why it's milder. And they can't tell you. So, and I'll tell you, uh, about three weeks ago, there was a small, small study that came out of, I think, either South Korea or maybe Israel, which was an ex vivo study, which looked at tissue samples from people who had Delta and people who had Omicron. And their very small study said that it looks like Omicron is not good at invading the lung tissues. It's staying in the bronchial systems. I didn't say anything about it because it was a small study. It was in a lab laboratory petri dish underneath the microscope. It might or might not. It was a clue, but it didn't mean anything, right? So now the news media has taken, um, you know, that headline, started to push that narrative, uh, more studies are coming in showing that that is indeed seems to be the case. So people who come down with Omicron, it's more of an upper respiratory illness. It's more like, you know, a, a cold or flu in terms of where it's attacking. It's not as efficient. Whatever the reason is, whatever one of its 50 mutations does, it's um, not as efficient as at entering your distal lung tissues. That's the problem with um, SARS-CoV-2 is it was invading your distal lung tissues. It was doing the AR, causing the ARDS, which then had this cytok cytokine storm cascade that we've heard so much about leading to blood clots, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, these are all things that we already knew from patients who suffer from ARDS that I've taken care of in the ICU, for example. So it's not news to me, uh, everything from last year, but... This Omicron variant seems to be more upper respiratory, your main bronchial stems, your, your nose here, your schnoggin goes down your, your airway, you know, uh, your windpipe. I swallowed down. <laughs> Have you ever drank something like <coughs> went down the wrong pipe? Goes down your bronchial airways and then it divides up into your main stems. Um, it seems to be evading that area, which leads to more upper respiratory symptoms. Now, why am I telling you that? As an adult, you might go, see, see, but... Listen, be, if you're a parent, you need to listen to me, or even an uncle or an aunt, okay? Just listen real quick. Kids do not do well with upper respiratory infections. They do not. They are obligate nose bleeders, like nose breathers. They, they can't breathe if their nose gets stuffy. They do very poorly. If you think of your kids who have cold, colds up in their nose and they start breathing through their mouths, they kind of have to. They can't clear this upper respiratory way. So this is the explanation of why you're seeing increased percentage of hospitalizations 
in kids, pediatric hospitals, two reasons. One, it's an upper respiratory illness, apparently with Omicron. Number two is they're not being vaccinated. Listen, knuckleheads, listen to me. <laughs> Dr. V, you're not going to convince them if you keep calling them names. <laughs> I know, but I'm frustrated. So, loving parents, loving parents, listen to me. You know, the teenagers 12 and older, they're not, I mean, there's been a push lately, but I still think we're maybe only 60% or so fully vaccinated in the 12 and older, but the five to 11 year olds, we're lagging behind like 40%. This is my urgent plea, please, please. If you have a child that's five to 11 years old, please get them vaccinated because the Omicron is attacking the upper airways. Now, why is this a problem? It's because they're, the young kids can't, handle the upper airway stuff imagine have you heard of croup do you remember croup are you old enough to remember croup that's an upper infection up in your upper airway they cannot they don't do well with that when that when have you heard of an adult who came down with a croup you you don't you know what is rsv it's an upper airway virus have you ever heard of a ch of an adult getting rsv no why not because we clear it. It doesn't affect us. It affects the kids. So Omicron, you can think of it as a pediatric targeted illness because one, child, children are more susceptible to it physio physiologically, and two, we're not fucking getting them vaccinated. So unfortunately, the hospitalization, 50% overall, but 200% in the pediatric population. This is bad. I have a five-year-old. She's she has two doses of the vaccine. I have a fifteen-year-old who's going to get her booster because that was passed this couple days ago. We listen for those who say, "Oh, but it's going to come and go real quick." Listen, stop reading headlines. South Africa's already gone down. Yeah, but UK has not. It's still bad in Europe, and we lag Europe by three to four weeks. I mean, the cases are still going up in UK. It's still going up in Spain and France and all the Western European countries. It's still going up. So we are still going to be going up four weeks from now. And maybe we'll start plateauing. And then we got another fucking four weeks of going down. I don't know if the going down will be fast like it was in South Africa. Or if it's going to be a slow tapering or what's going to happen. But hospitalizations are going to go up. And likewise, deaths will go up. It won't go up as much. For the reasons I just explained, but it will go up. You have to because the numbers are so overwhelming. Listen, guys, you've got, you've got at least eight weeks of this left before it really, really clears. You've got to hang in tight. You've got to not go to the Super Bowl. You've got to not go to concerts. Right? You've got to not go to gatherings. You've got to get boosted. You've got to you know, pray for our teachers. Pray for our nurse, our hospital staff, frontline workers, man. Right. And it's not just them, though. It's going to hit... And I've been saying this, it's going to hit the police force, fire department, and you call 911. Watch this. Comment if you had to call 911 recently and you were put on hold. That never happens. The emergency line, like no one answers 911. They're out. They're out sick. We are in trouble. Supply shortage, grocery store workers, gas stations, delivery men. Just wait and see. Wait and see when your Amazon package does not arrive the next day. <laughs> First world problems. Oh my God, where's my, where's my Amazon package? <laughs> you know, you'd be, you're going to be pissed. Sorry, Karen. Sorry, Billy. <laughs> Stay safe a little bit longer. We, it's actually going to be a lot longer, unfortunately. All right. Love y'all very much. Stay safe. Sorry for the rant. See you next time. Bye.